Hello everybody, this is Professor Ghanem Kashwani from the Applied Research. Today we continue in our series Applied Research Nexus in episode 2 with a very unique guest, a guest who has industrial and academic background, Dr. Leh. And personally, I'm very happy to have him. Dr. Leh, thank you for accepting our invitation and we are very happy to have you here in our series. Thank you for having me, Prof. It's my pleasure also to be here. Yeah. So, Dr. Lee, as an academic and as who won uh, work in the industry also, first of all, we want to know the, your journey about Lee until he became the professor, Dr. Lee, and how is, um, he was, has this blended mix between academia and industry. All right. Uh, once again, uh, I want to say thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Ghanim, for inviting me here. It's a great pleasure to be here. Now, um, basically, um, I started my academic journey with PhD in 2019, okay? Now, uh, prior to my uh, academic journey, okay, as much Prof. Kani had mentioned just now, I worked with the industry and also the ministry as well. During my time at the ministry, uh, uh, basically, I was in charge in the international collaborations in research and as well as uh, uh, industrial uh, linkages, okay? With my time in uh, industry, Okay, I basically work with a lot of uh, technical support and supplying the sales. Now, um, I did my PhD in the field of molecular biology in Japan because of my passion to research. So after my PhD, I continue uh, my training in research in a couple of universities in the world, uh, in UC Berkeley and also uh, in UC Nottingham. So basically, um, these four and a half years in HCT, uh, he has been a very exciting and a very happy journey, I would say because HCT itself uh, has provided me a very good platform to expand and grow my career. Not just that, it also allowed me to continue my passions toward research. So basically, I see that there's a great collaboration between the industry and also the academia. Okay, the knowledge and experience that I uh, learned from the industry could actually pretty much be used in the academy itself because I believe that these both always work together. And you know, one of the things that I like uh, from your research that this is mainly industry oriented. And um, recently you have been awarded the grant at HCT. So first of all, congrats for that. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Prof. Lenny. And it is with very catchy name, Ways to With. And um, can you provide um, an idea and a summary of this concept for our audience? Okay. And it's a very catchy name, uh, Dr. Le sure, definitely. Yeah. Now, basically, when we look at the context of ways to well itself, in the simple definitions, we're actually trying to um, transform or upscale some exhausted utility into a valuable community. Okay. And this is also a form of very good uh, waste management, more efficiently. So basically, what our group is working in HCT, we're actually uh, trying to use a date seed, okay. Okay, produced by millions of uh, date palm trees. Uh -huh. It's a waste. Uh, transform them into a useful uh, fish meal component, which okay. can be beneficial to our farmers. So um, what we're trying to do in the project that what Prof uh, mentioned just now, we're trying to create a more sustainable way of agriculture, at the same time to reduce the waste generated by mm -hmm. millions of dead palm trees uh, in UAE. Okay. Yeah. So it's mainly for me like circular economy here, there is zero waste. And it's very innovative, you know, idea, and it has in this application. And this then drove me to the my third question: that in the sustainable agriculture industry, you know, there is many um, innovative way that uh, we can uh, practice, especially in UAE. Mm -hmm. So, and it will be under the same concept, you know, waste to will. Mm -hmm. So, a part of what you mentioned. What other possibility and innovative that the industry can contribute under this umbrella? Well, um, what I'm looking at, as I mentioned just now, that we are uh, focusing on uh, transform the dead seed a waste from the industry into something useful. Now, um, as we all know that uh, the date palm industry basically uh, contribute a, a large amount of GDP, uh, agriculture GDP to the UAE. <laughs> and every year, uh, few hundred thousands of tons of dead seeds have been produced. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this generates a lot of waste basically. And it increases the carbon uh, emissions. And basically, uh, 
we set up this project uh, when we went down to the farm and we tried to understand the needs of the date farmer and also the fish farmer. They found that there's a lot of waste that are not being utilized and they want to get a way to actually generate income from this waste. Mm -hmm. Okay. Apparently, when we do the analysis with the fish farm, we also found that uh, a lot of fish meal used by the farmers in UAE particularly is actually imported. We don't have our own fish meal uh, okay. from the UAE. So that's where the ideas came in and I feel that, hey, why don't we work both together, combine both together, okay? One, we can actually process uh, the, the dead waste and another one can actually benefit from these uh, more cost-effective fish mill. So I think that uh, in terms of contribution within the industry, the industry can work together hand in hand with the academy, okay? Okay, okay they can uh, collaborate together, they'll come up with better solutions that can benefit uh, each party, basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I can see that um, all the stakeholders have a great chance to play in this uh, project, you know. So you mentioned the industry, you, you mentioned, you know, the farmers, is, uh, farmers and the also government. the government in terms of regulation, you know. We hear many new regulation UE in terms of circular economy that they try to do that with, with towards zero waste industry. And, um, and this is why a planned institute such as a city, the large applied institute here, can contribute heavily mm -hmm. uh, from applied research perspective. Yes. And what do you think the challenge here? You know, you miss some industry with the, the challenge that, especially in the system agriculture, mm -hmm. all the uh, stakeholders can contribute or overcome. If we say that industry, they have this main challenge, and what about academia and what about government? So if we can highlight the main challenge in your point of view, Dr. Lee. Um, in my point of view, uh, well, the biggest challenge for uh, the industry, I'm, I'm talking about particularly on the mm -hmm. farmers, mm -hmm. right, is the farmer buy-in on the new practice that we try, uh, academia try to introduce to them. So, uh, for example, now uh, we're trying to promote a more sustainable way of agriculture, agricu mm -hmm. agriculture basically. So, uh, the farmer need to buy-in, okay, mainly because they're going to look into the cost, mm -hmm. the cost of our, our product, or our, our innovation, and also the effectiveness of uh, our methods. Now, cost means now the farmers have been uh, so used with the current way of uh, practice. Okay, in order for them to shift for more sustainable way, okay, they need to look into will this actually implement higher cost of operation? Mm -hmm. Okay, will that reduce their profit? Now, in terms of um, effectiveness of the methods, okay, well, we look into that whether the methods we're trying to introduce to them would actually uh, produce similar if not a better output because in general this is what industry uh, look at i mean eventually it comes down to the dollar and cents the profit and the effectiveness of the methods we try to implement so what we do here in hct is that uh, we actually addresses these issues as i mentioned just now that uh, we use a date seed which is actually a waste right mm -hmm. it is free and it's actually a waste so we are confident that we can produce a more cost effective fish meal Okay. okay, that actually meet mm -hmm. the needs of the industry. At the same time, uh, our study also discovered a lot of good uh, novel natural biocompounds mm -hmm. that can enhance the immune response, that can enhance the growth. This significantly contribute to the output of the productions of the industry and the farmer. So we're confident that the product that we're going to develop soon, okay, will be create a great impact to the industry. Yeah. And you know that, uh, Dr. Lee, once um, I was saying that I'm, I'm interviewing you, I find many people, they have like more technical question mm -hmm. uh, because in a sustainable agriculture practice, um, it has very big potential here. Yes. And you know, it is, there's a huge need for this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in UAE. So one of the question, uh, they want to say how practical this approach is. Mm -hmm. And the question is said that, um, uh, how we can uh, you know, transfer the waste, specifically from the date palm? Uh, there is any case study that you have been do it here in UAE, and you face the challenge, and then it succeed. Because if we want to scale it up, and as you know, Doctor, when it's scaling up, we have different challenges. Yes. So this technical question, it will be uh, if the answer is uh, available, this will uh, save the industry, you know, a lot of uh, pre-study. Yeah, and there. Uh, actually, this is a very good and interesting question from Kanim. Yeah. Now, uh, actually, in the past, right, uh, UAE itself, uh, there's a several uh, studies have reported on the use of uh, date seeds, okay, as a fish meal component. 
However, today, okay, there's no convinced and tangible product reaches the market yet. Okay. Okay. So the, the main reason is that uh, the main problem that faces by uh, the other group is that okay, Dead Sea itself contains a very high fiber. Okay. Okay, which could be very difficult to be digested and absorbed by the fish. Mm -hmm. So what our group in HCT, in collaboration with our international collaborators from Monash and Malaysia, we have developed and established a specific protocol to solve these issues and formulate uh, okay, the dead seeds uh, fish meal to could be utilized in the farmers. So basically, yes, there have been uh, studies have been reported, but there has no tangible output. But we have resolved the main issue that causes the this product to reach the market. So currently, uh, I'm happy to share that uh, our group have seen a very positive and convincing result from our recent uh, fish trial in, okay. the, in, in the rank. And we are now upscaling into a uh, farm trial. Okay. We're trying to communicate with our, uh, working together with our fish farmer, okay, okay to, uh, to, to, to set up a, a farm trial, okay, to further confirm uh, the effectiveness of the product. So we will see that, uh, inshallah, soon, we will see that this product could be upscaled and reaches certain uh, states also in the market, yeah. inshallah. Yeah, I would say the, um, you, you have been one of the people, you know, have been awarded with the new grants and it's called the sustainability grants. Yeah. And it is one of the grants that we, it is more industry oriented. And talking about sustainability, the environmental impact, you know, many people, they consider environmental impact, yes. you know, and, uh, you know, that the UAE as a nation has a lot of committed to toward the environment. So the waste wood, how it can play a positive role in the environmental impact globally and locally? Now, um, Actually, this is also another very interesting quest, uh, question from Prof. Now, basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're actually using the waste uh, from the dead seeds uh, produced by millions of dead palm in the industry. Now, um, as we know that UAE itself is one of the major producers of dead palm. Okay, millions of uh, dead palm tree, few hundred thousand of tons produced. That create a lot of carbon emissions. Okay. 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 If we what we are doing right now is here, we're trying to turn something which is uh, causing carbon emissions in the environment into something valuable, not only in general income uh, to the uh, farmers, but it actually produces a more cost-effective fish meal. Okay, this can actually motivate and encourage okay the fish farmer okay to practice more in-house farming. Okay, in general, okay. it can reduce overfishing. Okay, okay, uh, reduce uh, the pollutions in the sea. Okay, protect the marine habitat. So. What we are doing actually is very pretty much in line with uh, the, the, the coming COP28 initiative and also the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, okay, mm -hmm. where 2030, we want to have a better food security, cleaner environment, life underwater. So I will say that our work not only impact uh, UAE itself, but if this practice could be implemented, okay, it could create a great impact globally for better sustainability. Okay. Yeah. okay. In as I can see, you know, waste to waste, it has the complete package. You know, in any applied yeah. research, I usually say there's three main pillars. Um, knowledge transfer and knowledge generation, we have it, check. Yeah. Commercial success, yes. check. And social impact, mm -hmm. check. Yeah. But for the future recommendation and the future challenge, since you are scaling up, uh, what do you think that uh, the coming up obstacles and the challenge, and usually Dr. Lee, in any research, even in applied research, mm -hmm. we answer some question and new question appears. Yes. So what are your future recommendations that? And what do you think the new question that should be taken care of from now to the coming up for the challenges coming? Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, <clears throat> uh, I'm a very strong advocate of environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a strong supporter of uh, recycling and upcycling. What I see that uh, our practice, if it could be implemented nationally and globally, it would create a huge impact. So moving forwards, okay, okay, what we need to do, okay, different stakeholder entities, whether it's academia, industry, endowment, they need to work together hand to hand. Mm -hmm. Academics, okay, we need to dive in into a deeper research to produce a more optimized fish feed. The farmer itself need to uh, encourage and update the product, okay. As for the government, they need to safeguard the practices. So basically, uh, the challenges now is that, okay, this all this entity need to be able uh, to collaborate, okay, and speak to each other, 
-hmm. okay, supporting each other, which I believe we could we could do it, mm -hmm. okay, okay. So by doing that, okay, whatever we develop, eventually will benefit not only the academia, not only the industry, but globally as whole. I mean, in a whole as well. So I will see that UAE is, uh, for example, starting as UAE as a drive of change. Okay, if we can promote and push this practice forward, okay, it could greatly impact uh, globally and internationally. So I see that the stakeholders really need to work together. Yeah, yeah. with the support. Uh, and the doctorate was uh, such a pleasure talking to you. I mean, personally, I learned a lot today. And the concept, West to World, I think, hopefully in the future, it become the new culture in the agriculture uh, practice. And it become a sustainable practice that everybody do it by default. Yeah, it's a pleasure uh, if my also to having me here today. And uh, it's great to be here as well. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Thank you so much for having me here. We thank our guest, Dr. Lee. Uh, I, I do believe in this series um, that uh, we show the potential industry that a city that can offer for all the stakeholders. We are very happy uh, to host Dr. Lee and we are looking to see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you so much.